With the strategy of would you rather, it's a scenario where you give the students two options and again embed the private think time and then you allow them to pick which option they would like to construct an argument about and they will move to that side of the room. So in the example today, you'll see an option A and an option B. All right, we are going to do uh, one more activity together. This one's a little bit different. This one is not a which one doesn't belong. This one is called would you rather, okay? So you're gonna have two choices and you're gonna have to figure out would you rather on each one of these choices. And again, you're still gonna be trying to construct a viable argument um, to say why your choice might be better than someone that picked the other choice. So I'm gonna show you two options of how you're gonna be paid. Uh, option A or option B for taking your younger sibling trick-or-treating. How many of you have a younger sibling, a younger brother or sister? Okay. Option A, you'll get paid $1 per house in four hours. Or option B, you get $80 for four hours without counting houses. If you're going to go with option A, if you think that's the argument that you want to try to defend, you're going to be moving to this half of the room in a moment. If you're gonna go with option B, you're gonna to move to that half of the room. And just like when we did four corners, once you get to your side of the room, you're gonna partner up. You're both gonna share your arguments of why you selected option A um, or if you selected option B. Okay, you ready? So here we go. Option A is over here, option B is over here. Let's go. Partner up. Shoot. Movement in the classroom is something that we feel really passionate about. We think it's very important. It can be a little scary to have middle schoolers get up and start moving around. It allows students that physical movement to actually get up and move throughout the room, but it also gives them an opportunity to share with different partners that they may not get the opportunity to share in their seats. So you're trying to get a lot of cross-pollination across the room and try to get as many ideas to spread across the room as you can. I think it's because you can't make, um, go to that many houses in just four hours. For option B, it's only um, $20 per hour, so we calculated 80 divided by four. Yeah, you're not getting like any more. So no more, no less. Air, just 80. So for option A, if you only go like 20 houses per hour, that's measly. So like, for every hour, there's at least 50 houses. So it's way more than 80. Yeah. And the next step after that is students actually moving into more of a debate. So we would call it constructive controversy of trying to state their arguments and see if they can convince someone from the other side to come to their side based on the convincing argument that they create. And I will say this, at any time during share out, if you are, let's say, on side B and something that someone says on side A really convinces you, they came up with a really strong argument, you're more than welcome to leave your side and move over to the other side. And the same thing, A's, if B's convince you, you can change your mind and move to the other side, okay? I didn't expect it, but students do change their mind. And within that, it's just fascinating to hear what was the convincing part of an argument that would draw them to one side or the other. There's more A's, so we're gonna start with A's. Okay, here we go. I would choose option A because it really only takes like a minute to go to house and house and you get a lot more money in four hours. And I would want more money than just that. <laughs> How many people does that make sense? Okay, so I'll check in. B's, you, anyone convinced that they want to switch sides? Not yet? Okay. All right, I heard another argument over on option A that I was hoping someone would be willing um, to share. For option B, you get like only $80 guaranteed, and like you don't get any more, but like, tw and we did 80 divided by four, so like $20 per hour, so 20 houses per hour. That's just measly. You probably get at least 50 an hour, so we'll get more money if we do option A. I chose option B because if you divide how much you get, and then the four hours, that means 20 houses per like, you know, hour. And like, usually when I go trick-or-treating or whatever, I don't go to 20 houses like per hour. How many people does that make sense? All right, anyone from A convinced? No, hold, okay, you're holding. Usually 
but um, most houses are usually closed, so like it's gonna like waste a lot of time. A's. What do you think? Anyone convinced? You're convinced? All right, get over there. All right. <laughs> when you see students change their mind and they move from one side to the other, uh, that's an opportunity to really celebrate. And what I mean by that is celebrate revising thinking. Many times middle school students are very hesitant to share an idea that is different from their peers. So when students do change their mind and change sides, we celebrate that and we talk a lot about how mathematicians are constantly revising their thinking and just how important that is to the mathematics that they will be doing in the real world. All right, can I, um, can I ask you what, what convinced you? What argument changed your mind? Anita's, I don't know how to say it. Argument? Argument. Mm -hmm. Because sometimes the houses can be closed and can waste a lot of time. That's why. All right. Thank you. Cool. There's been times where students have created an argument that I never even really thought of. And that's probably the most exciting and fun part of doing these strategies is when students' creativity and their mathematical thinking is displayed to the rest of the class and to myself as the teacher. Many students come to the math classroom with a negative disposition, and these talk routines, they're so open-ended, and also showing that there's multiple approaches when it comes to solving mathematical problems. And they're structured in such a way that students become more and more comfortable being able to share their mathematical ideas. And with that comes more and more confidence in their skills. So this isn't a question, but everyone raise their hand really, really high, really high, really high up in the air. Okay, now pat yourself on the back. You guys were a blast. Um, again, thank you so much.